Let's see how you can build your own AI-powered WhatsApp bot. We'll be building this project using Buildship, a new visual backend builder that combines the ease of no-code with the power of low-code so that you can build truly powerful APIs, workflows, or just about any backend logic you want. We'll also be using OpenAI's GPT for generating our replies and Twilio for sending the WhatsApp messages. It's fast and easy to get started by using our starter WhatsApp chat GPT template. In Billship, click the plus icon to create a new workflow. Next, select the WhatsApp chat GPT template to get started. This will generate the trigger and all the nodes required for your workflow to work. We'll go through the trigger and each of the nodes in just a few, but first we need to set up our trigger and the secret keys required by our project. Our trigger is responsible for triggering the execution of our workflow. In this case, we have an HTTP trigger that will be called from Twilio whenever we send a new message. The part that is important here is the path parameter. This is the endpoint that will be called, and you can pretty much have this be anything you want. The next important part is the HTTP method. It's currently set to post, but you can set it to whatever makes sense for the workflow you are building. Now let's quickly connect our Twilio sender number to our workflow. First, let's copy the endpoint URL of our workflow. Next, go to the WhatsApp sender section in the Twilio dashboard and select your sender number. Now paste your workflow endpoint in the webhook URL and make sure the HTTP method is set to post. Click update and that's it. Billship has a ton of pre-built nodes that you can use at any time. And if what you're looking for is not available, you can even create your own using AI, where all you have to do is describe the node you want. For this demo, we'll be using the OpenAI and Twilio nodes. Now let's start configuring our nodes. The OpenAI chat node is responsible for generating our replies. This is where you can configure the system prompt, specify the GPT model, temperature, and so on. We need to set up our OpenAI API key. Select the expression icon next to the OpenAI secret input field and select secrets. This will show you all of your project secrets, but if you don't already have an OpenAI secret, then you can easily create one by clicking add secret at the bottom. Click add secret key and then enter a name for your secret and just paste your OpenAI secret value, which you can get from your OpenAI account. Then just click save. And now you can go back and select your newly created secret key. The Twilio SMS sender node is responsible for sending back our GPT generated replies. Let's set up our Twilio secrets. Select the expression icon and select secrets. Let's now add a new secret. Enter Twilio for the name and for the value, we need to add it as JSON. Our node requires an out token and account SID, which you can get from your Twilio account. And the JSON needs to be in this format. Once you have the JSON in the right format, you can just paste it as the value and save the secret. And that's it. If you named your secret Twilio, then you don't have to do anything else. But if you did name it something else, you'll need to do one more thing. Click on the out token input field and replace the text Twilio with the name of your secret, and then do the same for the account SID. And since we're already here, you can paste your WhatsApp sender number in the from number input field. And that's all the changes we need to do. Great, now we can finally deploy our workflow. Click the deploy button, and with the deployment finished, we can now test that everything works. In WhatsApp, let's send a test message. And after a few seconds, we can see that we got back our GPT generated reply. Let's try to send another test message. And we can see that everything is working as expected. How cool is that? Now let's briefly go over what happens when our workflow is triggered from top to bottom. The nodes in our workflow are triggered sequentially. First, our HTTP trigger node is invoked whenever a new message is received. Second, our Twilio message parser node is executed and it consumes the incoming request body. If we take a look at the underlying code, 
we can see that this node is simply extracting and returning the relevant fields that we care about from the incoming Twilio request. Now, let's say you want to add your own custom functionality to this node or any other node, but you also want to validate that your customizations will not break the node. Well, this is where BuildShift's built-in testing feature comes into play. This allows you to test the behavior of your nodes during development without the need to deploy the entire workflow. Since we're already in the node editor, you can find the testing node on the left side. Here we can manually enter the values that correspond to the inputs of the node we're testing. In this case, it expects the Twilio request body. So let's enter these values. Now we can test the execution of our node by clicking the test node button. This will then evaluate our node logic using the provided inputs. If the test was successful, we'll see a green check mark. And if the test failed, we'll see a red exclamation mark, which can be clicked on to display the cause of the error. In our case, we can see that the test was successful, which is expected since we didn't make any changes to the node. So if you're looking to add your own twist, but uncertain how it will perform in production, then be sure to give BuildShift's testing feature a try so that you can identify any flaws or bugs before deploying them to your production environment. Moving on, our OpenAI chat node is executed next, taking in as input the user request and session key. Both of these values are retrieved from the Twilio message parser node. If you notice, we're using the values returned from a different node, and that's because within BuildShip, a node can consume the values returned from other nodes, and this combination of nodes is what ultimately forms a complete workflow. Specifically, this OpenAI chat node returns one value exactly, and that is the OpenAI text output. Lastly, our Twilio SMS sender node is responsible for replying with the GPP generated replies. It takes as input the two number, which we derive from our Twilio message parser node, and the message body, which is derived from the OpenAI chat node. And if we take a look at the code, we can see that it's using the Twilio JavaScript package for creating and sending messages. And just like that, with BuildShip's local tools at your fingertips, creating a comprehensive WhatsApp bot workflow or any backend workflow becomes a seamless endeavor. Remember, what we've explored today is merely the tip of the iceberg when it comes to BuildShip's potential and capabilities. Keep an eye out for future content where we'll share and highlight even more impressive features. That's all for now. See you in the next one.